In this problem, we have a uh, cyclic quadrilateral, which happens to be a rectangle. Um, and we have a few measurements given. We know that DE is 6 and DC is 6. Since this is a right angle, since it's a rectangle, let's just go ahead and recognize that must be 6 root 2 by 45, 45, 90, which means this is 45 also. Um, we also know that this length here is 8 BA because BA and BC are the same, which means EA is 2. Then the other piece of information that's easy to find is the diagonal of this uh, rectangle. It's going to be 10 because of 6, 8, 10 right triangle. Now, we've got to look at things that we know. Um, and uh, when you're looking at cyclic quadrilaterals, there's various things you're trying to find out. One of them is a uh, life is often easier if you know what a diameter is. And in this case, we do know a diameter, and that's AC. Um, and AC is a diameter because B and B are right angles. And if AC is a diameter, that means when I draw an FA, I get a right angle. Since this angle is 45 degrees, then the vertical angle of that is also 45, so that little triangle, EFA, is a 45, 45, 90. And so, right, if we have E, F, and A, and we know this is 45, if this is 2, well, to get to a leg, we divide by root 2. And 2 divided by root 2 turns out to be root 2. So now we know that EF is root 2 and FA is root 2. Well, S is also on the um, circle. So if we combine it with three other points, we have another cyclic quadrilateral. And um, with one of those side lengths, our cyclic quadrilateral would be DF, FA, and AC, and BC. And our goal is to find DF, so let's just call it X for now. Well, if you look at this using Ptolemy's theorem, Ptolemy's theorem says you take the opposite sides of the quadrilateral, so in this case, DF and CA, which is 10X, plus CD and FA, which is 6 root 2. DC, DC is 6 and FA is root 2. And then that's going to equal the product of the diagonals. Well, DA is 8. And CF, well, if CE is 6 root 2, then, um, and EF is root 2, then CF is 7 root 2. And so now we have an equation we can solve, um, and it turns out to solve very nicely because you get 10x equals, well, 6 root 2 minus 56 root 2 minus 6 root 2. It's going to give you 50 root 2. Divide both sides by 10, and you get 5 root 2. And so this is a really nice application of Ptolemy's theorem. Well, once we know that's 5 root 2, we can apply Ptolemy's again. Let's erase this to give ourselves some space here. Using DF this time, and this time we want to find BF, so let's go ahead and connect it up. Again, we just found out DF is 5 root 2. We just found out that um, BC, or not, B, we've known that BC is 8 and BC is 6. We know that BD is 10, and we know that um, CF equals 7 root 2. Those all came from the um, last bit of this problem. Well, now we can apply Ptolemy's again to find BF. It would be 6 times Y equals or plus 8 times 5 root 2, which is 40 root 2. So those are the opposite sides of our cyclic quadrilateral, which is BCDF. And then that equals the product of the diameters, or the, the um, diagonals. So BD is 10, and CF was 7 root 2. And that gives you 6Y equals 30 root 2 divided by 6. And you get y, which equals the same thing as df, 5 root 2, which is actually df. So it turned out they were exactly the same. And you could have actually figured that out another way, remembering that bd is a diameter, which makes df be a right angle. And um, if you got 5 root 2 and a, diameter, a hypotenuse of bd in that right triangle, then the other side has to be 5 root 2. So this is a really nice problem that utilizes a lot of things about cyclic quadrilateral.